everybody. This is Rocktavia Rose with Rock News UK. And on the line with me, I have the Disciples of Babylon. Um, I'm going to throw it over to the two wonderful members of the band to introduce themselves to you because I want you to get to know them a little bit better. So guys, you have the floor. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Eric Knight, lead vocalist. And I'm Guy Bodhi, bass player. And Becca vocalist, I guess, too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So where are you guys hanging out currently right now? Where are we reaching you from? Beautiful Los Angeles, California. Sunny. Very hot, very hot day. Extremely hot. Really hot? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I, I can't say the same sentiment here in Chicago. It's actually a mild, beautiful Chicago day. Nice kind of breeze out there and it's perfectly sunny and wonderful. So um, nice. you guys might hear some motorcycles kind of zooming by my window because I have everything kind of open. So I apologize <laughs> for any of that background noise, but hey, it's a beautiful day out, so. <laughs> we love motorcycles. <laughs> yes, so do I. <laughs> I plan on getting one very, very soon. I'm taking oh, wow. my test soon, so nice. <laughs> I'm nervous. Did oh, you God. did you go ahead? Did you do the uh, uh, safety course? No, that's what I'm going to do soon. I'm going to yes, get all Absolutely. my yes, do that. I'm doing it the right way. It. <laughs> no, th that thing real uh, actually that thing made me a better uh, driver overall. Everything now that I drive, I I I, I think I feel way more uh responsible and safe and and i kind of know what might happen like we cover a lot of stuff in those courses and really good stuff that's awesome so what do you already have a bike currently like what yeah yeah, what yeah. i have, have a i have a honda vtx 1300 right. it's it's a big boy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a big girl yeah. uh no it's 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 a big bike uh i i drive really chill i literally just cruise just go around and, and enjoy the wind on my face. <laughs> yeah. So ever since I was 16, I wanted like a Harley, like I wanted a soft tail, but I've been looking into Indian lately. So They're gorgeous. We'll, yeah, yeah. Like the classic feel India. We'll see. We'll see where I, where I land. We'll nice. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we've been chatting, like we'll, we'll get into it. Um, so what I want to know is kind of a little background information on your band, like how you guys came to be. I know you're kind of a diverse Motley crew. Um, so tell us <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourselves. Oh no, go ahead. Tell the uh, beginning of the of the band. Yeah, I mean, basically the band the the uh, started out as an, as an idea that I had in my head, you know, many years ago of like, you know, wanting to put the ultimate band together of what would that comprise and you know i had you know i've been playing in bands all my life and everything and you know i've had some success with some of those projects but uh you know i did the solo thing for many years and what ended up happening was i just kind of lost that you know i missed the feeling of having that camaraderie of having you know four guys together you know all for one one for all kind of thing and so I had always thought in the back of my mind, I'm going to put another band back together again, for sure. When the time is right, or, you know, I'm a very kind of spontaneous carry. And so when I kind of see things, I kind of just go with it. And uh, it turned out that I happened to see, uh, you know, our guitar player, Ramon, one day. We, we happen to be friends, you know, we have millions of friends on Facebook that we, you know, don't know how the hell we became friends and we were <laughs> friends. and. All of a sudden, I was going through my my feed one day on my phone, and I and I'm seeing this guy with this video, and I go, I, I met this guy before because I remember him from the school because we all went to MI together in, in Hollywood Musicians Institute, uh, but at different times. But I was there because I was invited for an event, and I ran into to Ramon, but you know we didn't know who the hell we were, and somehow we became friends. And so one day I was scrolling through my feed, and I'm seeing this video of this guy playing in his apartment. And he was playing uh, uh, Blackbird, Blackbird from Alter Bridge. Nice. Alter Bridge, doing the, and he was doing the guitar solo for it, and I just said, "Holy crap! Can we curse? Or we don't curse? But I, I want to make sure we're <laughs> keeping it family friendly." Um, and I was like, at that very moment, my airy spontaneity kicked in, and I go, "That's the guy that I need for this band." 
And so I immediately wrote him this like really long message. This guy probably thought I was like stalker guy. And, uh, <laughs> and I told him I really loved what I heard. You he know, still he, thinks. Yeah, he still thinks. I'm stalker. <laughs> and so what happened was, you know, I just told him, you know, I, I loved what I saw. You know, he, he just has all the emotion of the playing. He's got the look. He's got everything, you know, and, and he's got that thing of where he's just, you could just tell, very gifted guitar player. So I told him that, you know, I, I would love to get together and meet up with you. And, you know, so we ended up getting together at the Starbucks over there on Hollywood Boulevard, right, right across from our school. And um, I just sat there and I told him in no uncertain terms, I said, I want to put the biggest band in the planet together. And uh, I think you're the guy for that. And so I basically, you know, told him about all my influences and kind of, you know, where my background was. And we both had that, we shared that same vision of all the great rock bands. And, you know, and basically the, the idea was, I told them that I wanted to kind of put together a band that was from all the great eras, like from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, taking bits and pieces of each of those elements of those the great bands from those times and, and putting together what is now what, you know, what I feel like what we're starting to achieve. And so that's kind of the way that that started and then you know me and ramon began to to write songs we, we after we you know spoke together we, we got together for a couple of writing sessions immediately wrote one of our songs that was in our first ep for arrive we did that like in 30 minutes it was like literally like a domino's pizza we put it in 30 minutes it was it was out the door <laughs> and we realized that you know and it was weird because I get these weird feelings and even from seeing the video of Ramon, I immediately got the innate feeling that I just knew that we were going to have great chemistry writing together and all of these things. And so the minute we had those first two initial sessions, we, we just it just gelled and we just clicked and everything was great. And so, you know, uh, we started talking as we kept writing through the weeks and months, uh, you know, Ramon suggested, you know, we need to start putting the actual rest of the band together. and. Um, and I asked him if he had anybody in mind. I had a few people in mind, but, you know, Ramon immediately said, I know this guy. And it turned out to be he. And uh, they were, you know, they lived in the opposing building to each other because the dorms that they had, you know, because he's from Brazil and, and Ramon came from Spain to go to school in Hollywood. And so uh, they were in the opposing building next to each other. So one day uh, he came to, to the house, to Ramon's place, and, you know, he had that same smile right now that he's smiling right now, that same face. And I just knew this guy is like, first of all, the sweetest guy in the world and you know, <laughs> super, super talented. And, you know, he immediately started contributing to what we were doing. And, you know, it, it just clicked. And I said, well, this is the guy. And we immediately got key. And then, you know, we started figuring out, well, we need a drummer. I think we auditioned every drummer in L.A. probably like three times. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, it yeah. was a process. Yeah. Wow. And then we ended up... I mean, like, your drummer, that's the heartbeat. I, I get it. Like, yeah. yeah. It's how we I need, play drums. You like, need the right guy. Yeah, yeah. you do. The heartbeat. You do. <laughs> yeah. And so after, after you know, we had an original drummer, which actually was from the school, Sue Ray, which was an incredible drummer, great friend. Mm -hmm. uh, those, that didn't pan out initially, and so we auditioned a ton of other drummers again, and uh, it turned out Chris, which is the guy that we had originally that I had actually kind of picked in one of these Children, yeah. uh, uh, ended up being the drummer and, you know, and kind of the rest of the history of that. Awesome. So yeah. like, going back to like the very start, what inspired you to become a musician? What inspired you Guy, to pick up, you know, a bass Ooh. guitar or guitar initially? What inspired you to, you know, try to pursue this as something that, you know, you're actually putting your life's work, your heart into. Right. Um, well, I, I've always been really into music, I think, my whole life. When I was a little kid, uh, you know, I, I'd see my sister uh, playing piano. I have an older sister. And, you know, like, younger brothers were like, oh, I want to do exactly what she's doing. So I tried piano at first when I was, what, six, seven years old. Uh, but I, uh, she was, she, she was having a classical guitar, uh, piano classes, sorry. And I couldn't really stick to the regimen of, you know, practice 
practicing and studying and applying myself and reading music and all that at that age. I real I loved music, but I wasn't uh, able to commit to that. I guess I was too, uh, I don't know, OCD. I, I was always running around and wanted to play soccer, you know, down in Brazil. Soccer. Right, yeah. Uh, and, but then when I was a teenager um, in high school, I remember a friend of mine bringing his, and I'm gonna date himself now. He, he brought his disc man with this uh, CD, and he's like, You gotta you listen to yourself this. there. And then disc man. The, the headphones. <laughs> a little bit. So I put on the headphones, and he's like, and he hits play, and I hear this guitar. It was Thunderstruck by ACDC. Yes! And I was like, Oh my God, this is incredible. We gotta do this. So then we got together, a group of friends, and uh, I had one friend already, uh, lefty guy. So he he he'd been playing guitar for a little while. So he's like, hey, I, I I play guitar a little bit already. My other friend was like, hey, I've always wanted to to learn the drums. So you know, I, I have the the space for it in my bedroom so I, I'm just gonna go get a, a drum set and I'm like okay we got a guitar we got to uh, I'm gonna play bass I'm gonna play bass <laughs> literally that's how I ended up uh, playing bass because it was the last thing that we had to put together to form that first band of, of ours and I fell in love with it I actually I was very fortunate to have had my uh, first bass teacher being a multi-instrumentalist because when I first uh, approached him, he, he was like, okay, so do you play any stringed instrument? I was like, no. He's like, cool. So let me make a deal with you. I'll teach you three months of acoustic guitar because I want to give you a good foundation on chord formation, right. on how things right. are put together Finger harmonically. String. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to start, of course, to creating a little bit of calluses because yes. if you go straight to the bass, it might be a little too heavy for you right now. Uh, so we did that, and then we we went on to to bass, and I've been playing bass ever since. Uh, and long story short, I had another career back in Brazil, but when the opportunity to come here to the U.S. to give music a try uh, presented itself, I just I just took it, and here I am, 11 years later, still doing it. <laughs> Fantastic, Fantastic. <clears throat> Eric, how did you get started with everything? I got started, you know, from a very early age. Uh, literally, I saw kids on television. And, <laughs> awesome. And I just go, what the hell is this? And how do I join? Um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm a huge fan of comic books. I have like a major comic book collection. And yes. so I saw these guys and they look like superheroes to me. And I'm going, wow. And they're doing music. I was like, holy crap. I want to do that. So. That's basically how it started. And, you know, even a little bit previously to that making that epiphany with his, I was doing stuff in school from a very early age. I was singing in plays and doing all these kind of things uh, for yeah. different events at school. And so it just kind of became natural to me. I, I was a big sports fan too. I was actually trying to pursue a career doing playing football. But when I realized how these guys get injured and I just said, you know what, yeah. this is kind of not for me. Uh, I competed for a very long time, uh, even through like, you know, up to like junior high and stuff. But then I kind of just said, this is not going to be this. And I just kind of just pursued it full bore. But yeah, music has been a part of my life, like me from a very young age. Like you, Rock Baby, I play multiple instruments that I've learned by ear. I learned how to play guitar. My dad was a rhythm guitar player uh, in a lot of bands growing up back home in Miami. I'm originally from Miami. And so I learned actually, you know, guitar. And then in school, I, you know, I, I learned how to play drums, saxophone, tenor sax. Really? Uh, huh. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, and start, and, you know, and I fiddled around with clarinet a little bit and trumpet, but I love, I love kind of saxophone and stuff. So, um, so just learning everything by ear, piano, everything. And so that's kind of how I got into it. And uh, I've never looked back ever since, you know, it's been, you know, nonstop. That's fantastic. So <clears throat> I feel like in the mafia, it's like you either die or there's no way out of it. Once you get hooked, and you're, you're yeah. Oh well, yeah. So I want to know a little bit more about your musical heroes. I know you saw Kiss and you were like, wow, like Eric on your end and he like, like let let me who who 
did you see growing up? Because we all have that like that aha moment where we see that one band or that one lead singer, or that one musician is like, oh man, I gotta get in on that. Wow. <laughs> Gee, what were, what were some of yours? Oof, man. Um, it, it's funny, though, because, again, I, I think I got into, you know, actually really got into music uh, a little later on in life. Uh, I, I'd listen to music again, and I, I would play music and everything, but, like, really immerse myself in, in music came a little later. So when I started attending uh, concerts, I remember my first mind-blowing concert was uh, Deep Purple in yeah. Sao Paulo. Yes. Dude, <laughs> the moment I saw Ian Pace drumming like a madman, Ian Gillen screaming his ass off, uh, Roger Glover shredding the bass, I, I was like, I, I had no idea you could play bass like that with a pick you know that that's when later right, on right, i started right, right, right. you know <laughs> going back to my bass heroes paul mccartney gene simmons they all play with a pick uh, but uh and then they had just uh changed the lineup so steve morris was the guitar player uh, it was i think like the first tour Number that they four. they were doing four. oh my god yeah dude you you see Steve Morris live, uh, you 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 can't help yourself but being in awe. Like the guy's tone, technique, and musicality is just so mind blowing. Uh, so that was for sure my biggest like or, uh, latest. No wait, what what am I trying to say? My biggest influence at first when I first started going out to to seeing concerts and all. Later on came White Snake. Judas Priest, local rock and metal bands as well, because then I started really, uh, the, the people that I was hanging out with were really into heavy metal. So I just okay. dived right in. Uh, Sepultura, Angra, uh, even a little, a couple of years later, Shaman, like a bunch of really good metal bands from Brazil. Uh, and yeah, everything else is, came from that experience that I had with Purple. I, I just couldn't stop wanting to go and check out more bands live. Yeah, and I, I, I would say the kind of the same for, I mean, I, I was very fortunate again, cause I, I had music because my dad was playing in band since I was a little kid, a baby. So I grew up with music in my home, 24 hours, seven days a week, a lot of R&B, jazz, you know, Earth, Wind and Fire. I mean, all those type of bands. So I grew up listening to a lot of different styles of music, which I think was great. But obviously, my love and my passion was hard rock and heavy metal. Some of the same bands that he's mentioning, you know, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, the whole new yeah. wave British heavy heavy metal movement. Yes, <laughs> you know, yes. All of that stuff, you know, that was like, you know, kind of ingrained into my DNA. And so, you know, so by the time that I, you know, that this whole chance meeting with Ramon would happen, you know, coming from Spain, they're big, you know, it's interesting because he, with Brazil, Brazil is one of the biggest metal communities in the planet. And you've got this scene, which is another huge metal. I mean, they have got such a huge network there of metal and everything. And so, you know, when I intersected with Ramon, it was just like perfect because we'd all listen to the same thing. And then he, it was the same kind of thing. I think probably Chris is the one that's more on the outskirts he he listens to more of the kind of screamo i mean he listens to everything we all listen to everything that's what the beautiful thing about the band is is that we can appreciate all styles of music yeah. as long exactly. as they're great great songs um but that's kind of how this whole kind of thing meshes together and because of Guy's background with brazil and and spain and, and i'm cuban even though i don't look it we have all of this Latin kind of, uh, you know, multi-influence and, and it's kind of like this big kind of like, you know, gumbo pot of like, you know, influences. So it's, it's, it's amazing. You know? Where did your band name come from? Like, I've, I've been curious about this from the start. <laughs> um, the, the name actually came up from research that I was doing. You know, we all keep like lists of band names. I, I know I do. And, uh, I had all these tons of names that I had kept. And one day I was reading stuff about the history of Babylon. 
and how that all came about and the whole rise and fall of Babylon, which actually turned out to be one of our titles of our records. And uh, there was something in one of the texts that I was reading, and they were talking about the people of Babylon, but they instead of referring them as the, the citizens of Babylon, they referred to them as the disciples of Babylon. And I thought that that was such a like striking name when I had heard that. Uh, you know, a lot of people tend to think that it's from the band Dragon Force that we took that name because uh, they have a song called Disciples of Babylon, but it's not. Uh, and, and I had it for many, many years. And so I kind of, after I read that, I was like, man, this is such a cool name that I just tucked it away in my list of band names. And I said, one day I'm going to use that name. And it was again it was a series of events i met ramon saw the thing and i said this is it disciples of babylon this is going to be the band name i had already had it all kind of pre-planned in my head and then i you know uh, initially told ramon what do you think of the name and he was like cool and so the name really represents babylon as america it's a metaphor for america uh, you've probably seen things about how they talk about babylon being america being part of the new version of babylon and you know and how we're kind of self-destructing ourselves and all that stuff. So it's a big metaphor. And and, and even with our music, I, you know, I, we talk about those kind of things with songs like Liberty and We Are The Ones and all that stuff. So it was kind of a perfect way to kind of represent what we're, what it's about. I mean, people think that like we're either, it's the funniest thing, people either think we're like a Christian band or we're like a, a death metal <laughs> right. band. Which, I was kind yeah. of wondering that, like, I know, are, do you guys do like philanthropic stuff or like? We definitely do. We definitely are big into charities and wanting to, you know, our thing is about unifying people and not dividing them. Like this is what's been happening for the last, you know, few years in particular, but it's been going on much more longer than that. And so our thing is we want to put things out there in our music. You know, there's always kind of like a silver lining in our music. Uh, but we want to be the mirror to people around the world and 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 bring to people's attention what it is that's going on but i know that we all can agree in the band that we want to unify people through our music we don't want to divide and music is really the one thing on the face of this planet i don't care it's over religion over any other medium on the face of the planet that can bring people together is is music and so that's kind of why i'm doing this and there was a famous quote from Jimi Hendrix, which I thought I, I had. I thought it was my quote. I was like, oh, music is my religion. And I, <laughs> and I, quote, and I was like, that's that. Um, but music truly, at least for me personally, I don't know about the other guys, but it is my religion 100%, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I live, eat, breathe, sleep it. And, uh, and so, you know, we want to kind of, you know, through our music, you know, send a message of positivity and, and, and making people aware of what's going on. Like other bands in the past, you've got bands like U2 that were very politically and very socially conscious. That's what I think our band is, is we're a very socially conscious band, you know. That's perfect. You kind of covered the next question that I had. You said we'd write into it and covered it. Um, I was going to ask what it message that your band is trying to relay to the world through your music what you're trying to get out there and you know that was i couldn't have said it better myself <laughs> it's perfect um but uh on to my next question what kind of sound profile for those that haven't discovered you yet like i know we spoke about like classic rock and and metal so like is does that relay i've listened but for people who haven't does that relay into your current sound? What is your current sound profile? I I'm gonna let D answer, but yeah. I, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna let D answer, but I like to call our sound new classic rock. That's the, that's the tag that new I'm classic. Thinking. Because it's got all the elements of all the different classic rock bands and the current rock bands and it's got a modern touch to it. So let's see, that's True. what I'm calling. Yeah, I I think our we, because we have so many different influences, it's uh, and we do not hold have anything. We we make music that we like that makes us happy. Uh, so we tend to just fuse a bunch of different things. Uh, we're of course really heavy on guitar and guitar riffs, uh, and, and but at the same time we 
put in some electronic elements into our music. We we like to make really pop vocal melodies, and we just put all of that together. You know, we we want the big anthem stadium sing-alongs but with heavy guitars and some electronic stuff in it and just you know we we just like to uh really add all the elements of every single genre that we like uh and, and just create this thing and i guess that's that's disciples you gotta love like that stadium band feel like last night i was just at what's called the hella mega tour where there's bands um, called The Interrupters, yeah, Weezer, yeah, All Out Boy, and uh-huh. Green Day, Love all it. pack fans into this stadium, <laughs> and we all rock out, and it was heaven on earth. It felt so good I after bet. the last year to be there and seeing all the people who grew up with this music. You can tell we're starting to get a little long in the tooth. Um, but, (laughs) and then there's also people who are like discovering this music too. And like to have that stadium crowd, to be in a stadium crowd feel, man, that's the best feeling ever. I love that you're trying to pipe out stadium style music. I love it. That is, that's exactly, that, that, it's funny because when I first spoke to Ramona, we were writing as a band, I told them, I want to write anthem songs that people are going to be screaming every word back to us. And, you know. Again, I go back to bands like U2. You go to a U2 concert and people are like screaming every word to every song. Mm -hmm. Mono can stop singing and you're just hearing the whole crowd singing. All right, everybody, we're back. Um, We had some technical snafus, so we had to start a second session. So Um, we're having some good conversation here. So Mm -hmm. um, where do we leave off? We left off on the sound profiles, right? Yeah. Eric was mentioning U2's uh, concerts. Yeah, that was kind of the blueprint for what I wanted to do. I want to write songs that the, an entire stadium is going to be singing back to us. That pretty much sums it up. <laughs> Perfect. So um, I have to ask you, what would your biggest dream for Disciples of Babylon to be to come true, like the best thing ever you could ever imagine for the band. Um, I, I you know, I'll, I think it's just doing what we do, continuing to play music, making a living doing it, doing it, you know, playing all the major events, you know, things that we've dreamed about, download, I mean, you know, all the major festivals, uh, you know, but I think ultimately, at least for me, is to continue playing with these guys. I have such a love for each one of the guys in the band. Just really great people. He's blushing. <laughs> really, 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 I, consider, I consider everybody family and, you know, I've learned a lot from the previous projects that I've been in and like I said, this to me was like putting together the ultimate project in my head, what I kind of envisioned and these are the, the guys that, that manifested themselves and they're just such good people. It's very hard to in a, to be in a band, as everybody knows, you know, there's a lot of egos, attitudes, there's so many different variables that people just, <laughs> you know, and to find people you that tell are, me about and, it. And, and to find people that are up. Is to find, there some you know, residual? Like- <laughs> Yeah. No, no, not at all. I mean, I, I certainly have PTSD from, from bands. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, ultimately, these are the guys that I love to play with because they're very good people, uh, you know, come from good family. I mean, just I couldn't ask for a better group of guys to be playing with. So uh, I, I'm very thankful. But so to me, I'm already I feel like I've already accomplished it because these are great guys that I would love to continue playing with and just, you know, continuing continuing to write music and just trying to keep elevating the bar. You know? And our fans, I mean, we've got fans from all over the world that have been super, super supportive of us. So, yeah. That's perfect. Um, so how long have you guys all been together? Oof, since 2000, I want to say 11. 12. 
Yeah. That's uh, when we started. That's right. Officially, but we officially came out in 2015 with our first release. So it was the first uh-huh. two years were us just writing, putting together all the elements, recording. Right. And so, yeah. Doing doing pre-production with Andy. Yeah, with Andy, exactly. He, he helped us a lot in the beginning. It still does. Uh, Andres Torres, our producer, and our first drummer for our EP. Yeah. He actually laid down the drum parts. Uh, incredible guy. You probably know him uh, through his biggest hit that he helped to put out, uh, Luis Fonsi's Despacito. Yeah. Uh, so he worked on that. The guy doing Despacito does a rock, but he's a huge hard rock metal guy too. Oh no, yeah. I remember us talking about his influences. And then he started talking like, you know, I like Incubus, but the old stuff, like, yeah, he knows his stuff, like he knows his rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, overall, because I, I, I play with Andy too, because me, him and Ramon attended Musicians Institute uh, together uh, same year. And we played together in like punk rock bands and you, you, you know, you would turn on your social medias and he'd be playing uh, reggaeton and like the guy can play anything, anything. And he is a very accomplished songwriter as well. So the guy is just brilliant. So it's it, it, it's been a blessing for us to be able to work with such a caliber of a musician and producer and songwriter and, and engineer. Arranger. He's also a great he's sound a, engineer. Yeah, he's a gifted arranger. Like, mm-hmm. like are the best arranger I've ever come across. Like, oh yeah, and, and and he's like you know no no BS. Like he gets in the studio, play me the song. We start playing. He doesn't even go through the whole song. He's like stop this section. We need to cut it off, uh, or cut it in half, or move it See, somewhere that's, else. That's, that's beautiful. That's kind of like one of the rarest gems because editing mm-hmm. editing is really important. Like, sometimes you want to throw the whole kitchen sink at everything, but... mm. (laughs) Yeah, and and it's crazy. You see, like, like bands that really made it. Uh, um, I guess the biggest example, uh, the Beatles. If they didn't have George Martin by their side, they wouldn't have been what they became. Right, Like exactly. Hands down. Hands down, that guy just helped them a lot. Classically trained musician uh with arrangement knowledge and you know strings and orchestra related uh instruments he just took him to the next level there's a reason why he's called the fifth beater he's straight up straight up he was so uh what would you guys say your most memorable moment with the band has been thus far i know mine Go ahead, dude. You go, because I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're done. Uh, I think our last show at the Viper Room was yeah. a really, really cool event because it was something that we put together pretty much ourselves. And when I say ourselves, mainly this guy, which in my screen, it's down here. <laughs> so Eric did pretty much the whole thing. Uh, he put the whole thing together uh, and it was just awesome to play, you know, in your hometown and have all your friends and family right. come to check you out. And, and it, it was really a, just a celebration of the band, of live music, of friendships. And uh, I, I recall that uh, and it always puts a smile on my face. Yeah, that I would have to probably agree with uh, me. I mean, it's so weird. We've had so many great shows, like, no no joke. Like, I mean, there's been so many great shows, again, because these guys make certainly make me look good. Uh, they're just <laughs> gifted musicians. But that Viper Room show, yeah, it was definitely a, a high point because everything just kind of came together. It was all our fans, friends. Fan, I mean, it was just packed. It was packed. Packed. You yeah. Have, like, I mean, it was just insane and just a, a great... Uh, night of just yeah sharing this hard work that we put together putting that you know that last record together and just you know it was very rewarding awesome so uh 
What does the ultimate tour look like for you guys? Like favorite venues, favorite gig? Like if you could put together at least like three points of like, or at least like a major point of a tour, what would you, what would you put together? I would say just, you know, I mean, ultimately, you know, doing like something like what Metallica and Guns N' Roses are doing, playing stadiums all over the all over the planet. Yeah. Uh, I would love for it to be, be build uh, us with Muse and you know probably somebody like Royal Blood. Yeah, uh, Royal yeah. Blood. Woo! Love it. I, I think that would be like a, an, an amazing thing. We're all huge Muse fans and huge Royal Blood fans, and just you know. Uh, that would be amazing, uh, you know, but just to be able to play every night. I mean, I, I frankly don't care if it's in front of a thousand people or a hundred people or 10,000 or a hundred thousand. Uh, right. I just want to play, you know. So. Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, if if we are allowed to dream a little bit, I'd say there's a couple of places that I, it, I would really be taking like top of the list <laughs> type of venues i would love to play at the forum here because it was the first van big venue that i went to check out uh, the foo fighters a while ago i love ago. the foo fighters they're the best oh my gosh i love them too <laughs> such a good songwriter i mean dave Grohl is just incredible he can sing he can write songs on guitar and he's a badass drummer and he's really, he really kind and considerate. Like he, yeah. he looks he out. Does look like that. Things and bands, and kind of likes to like. He, he's great with like helping bands get their start and like get their mm -hmm. foothold, get their sound out there. I love Absolutely. him. Absolutely, he's amazing. Absolutely, amazing human being. Uh, when when I when I went to their show, uh, they had Bush in the bill as well, but they had this fairly unknown back then than uh, Cage the Elephant. And that was pretty cool. Yeah. Like the, they, the, <laughs> those three bands together worked really well. Uh, it was just really uh, a great evening of really cool music. So from here in LA, uh, I mean, if I ever play Madison Square Garden, I don't know if my heart will be able to handle it, but yeah. that'd be a big one. Mm -hmm. And See what he uh, for England. I know he's going to say the same one that I say for England. Go. Well, I, I was first going to go back home. Uh, so yeah. there's this stadium in Sao Paulo uh, that hosted most of the shows that I attended uh, back home. So it's the stadium for, for the soccer team of Sao Paulo. Uh, so Cicero. Uh, Pompeo de Toledo, that's the name of the actual stadium. And it's a big stadium. It was one of the last YouTube concerts that I watched when I was still back in Brazil. And then I watched them here at the Angel Stadium. Uh, but Wimbledon too, I mean, I guess that had to be in the list. <laughs> Wembley Arena? Yeah, I would say Wembley Arena. Wembley is like ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> Wembley Arena, Royal Albert Hall uh, in England. Uh, I would say Budokan in Japan. And oh, yeah, yeah Budokan, so Budokan good. Japan, Mr. Which... Big, Dream Theater, oh. uh, off the top of my head, uh, Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick. Yes. Everybody, yes. everybody play there. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, and then of course back home, uh, you know, for me, Miami, I would love to play, you know, like Dolphin Stadium. On the Dolphin nice. So, you know, I mean, yeah, of course, and then the Forum, for sure. Uh, I would love to play the Greek Theater here. The Greek Theater Ooh, here in LA. Yeah. It's a small, intimate, like, I think it's like a 3,000 theater, but just beautiful because it's, it's like gorgeous. outside and the stars and you're just looking up. I think Greta Van Fleet has a show coming up now uh, at the Greek, and I've seen a bunch of concerts there. That's probably one of the most gorgeous places to play a, a venue. And Red Rocks in Colorado. Red Rocks. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Red, Red Rock is pretty Those cool. Ones that My I soul is... <laughs> <laughs> Get you guys to the Greek. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what do you guys do to wind down? What do you do for fun as a band? Um, I'm trying to think as a band, we usually do no, in general, like, like, what do you do? Like, what do you do for fun? Like, you know, everybody has their, 
I don't know. There's a lot of stress with being a musician and touring, and like you have everything with all angles coming from you. Like, oh, are they gonna like this? This new thing that I'm putting out. What's this? What's that? Like, I have to have all these people who I have to like work with, and you know, everything's coming at me. And like, you know, I just kind of like to ask, like, so what do you do to keep grounded? I, I think. For for me would be personally would be I, you know I do I mean we've been isolated as everybody knows for a year and a half now uh, and things are starting to get crazy again you know here especially in LA they're starting the mask mandates again so um, I, I love reading so I'm a really voracious reader so I'm constantly reading stuff so that's kind of one way uh, I love you know watching movies uh, and uh, yeah I think th those are kind of some of my pastimes I know it sounds pretty boring but. Uh, no. I like watching old horror movies. Like lately, there's been this show on TV that I that I came across, and they show all like these old classic horror movies. But and they're cheesy as hell. So. I love the campy horror movies. Yeah. So I've been, <laughs> I've, been I've been doing that a lot lately, just kind of hanging mm. out and just watching that. So that's it. And then you know, um, you know, going out to parks and stuff like. I mean, that's kind of my thing. So Steve, I don't know about you. Oh man, I have so many things that I like to do. I actually have to control myself sometimes not to, uh, you know, just do the things that I that I like to, but go back to working. But um, I, I guess I'm. I love movies. I uh, actually I fell in love with uh, you know movies again because I'm really and, and of course I'm biased, but. You guys can check out for yourselves. A really good friend of mine put out a, a really special movie. It's called Nine Days. He's a fellow Brazilian friend of mine. I met him ages ago. Uh, and I actually helped him transition from Brazil to LA because he went to USC to do uh, his directing and screenwriting uh, course. And man, he just put out this beautiful movie called Nine Days by Edson Oda. Uh, which was purchased by Sony Classics. So I don't know if you know the uh, repertoire that <laughs> Sony Classics well, that's, uh, acquire. Well, that's, really, that's impressive. They are really, yeah, really no. good. And he's got studios. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, what else? I love to ride my bike, even if it's you know going next door to the groceries to you know just just to take it out and. and have fun for a second uh and i also do love cooking i spent a lot of time in the kitchen <laughs> I, I was one of those guys that contributed to the lack of uh starters and dry yeast in the market the moment uh the pandemic <laughs> and the lockdown bread, hit us. you were bread baking it up huh <laughs> maniac. Uh, and i love to bake like i i i'm a nerd I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, I am. Join the club. <laughs> I love the fact that baking is, a lot of people don't like baking because it's precise. And essentially it's chemistry that you can eat. And I'm all about that. So yeah. Same here. It on. <laughs> I, I, I tell my friends, like, I don't, I don't do stuff, uh, you know, like, oh yeah, you just a pinch of this or cups of that. I'm like, no, give me the grams that I need to be able to cook this or that. So yeah, that, uh, you know. I mean, I can diversify to too, because like, I make a lot of Italian food, because like yeah. sometimes with Italian food, especially when you scratch make stuff, like you do kind of like, you have to make it by love. Like you got to make it by feel, and like it's here and pinches there. But it, like, I kind of like find comfort in like, you know, you're regimented in baking and you, you make something and then when it comes out, just how you envision it or if not better, and then somebody takes a bite yeah. and they're just like, they look at you like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's my favorite. Like when you bake something and somebody takes a bite and they yep. just like, oh. <laughs> so Absolutely. My, yeah. my friends and family are tired of me throwing <laughs> little uh, French baguettes at them because that's all I do. <laughs> I have lots of heat cooking and I can attest it's all very good. All that Brazilian, <laughs> have those crazy Brazilian parties. I'm all about it. Yep. Um, so uh, back to business. Um, your recent single, the most recent single, Liberty. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Like, 
where it, it grew out of and like a little bit about the process. Yeah, I mean, it, it immediately grew out of what was going on in the country. Again, getting back to Babylon and the whole uh, metaphor for Babylon in America, uh, it definitely came as a direct result of what was happening uh, and what continues to happen uh, with the whole division in this country and the craziness that's going on. And so uh, it, it was immediately, you know, I, I had the idea. I remember storming into one of our rehearsals one day and I said, okay, guys, this is what's going on. Uh, here's the melody. And then, you know, I think I, I you know, was showing everybody, everybody's like, okay, calm the hell down and let's take it <laughs> one step at a time. So, you know, it, it kind of came from, you know, I just heard, I tend to hear the melodies. I know Z probably does the same thing. I, I'll hear melodies in my head and I cannot, if, if it's something that I cannot get out of my head for like a day, then I go, okay, I have something here that you I need to put it out. Worth right. while. And so I remember coming into one of our rehearsals and just saying, guys, I've got an idea. I need everybody to just kind of listen to my craziness because I'll drive people crazy because I'm the type of writer that I'm hearing all the parts in my head at once. Yeah. So I, I not only hear what I'm singing, but I'm hearing what the guitar is doing. I can tell you what the drum's going to do. And so, you know, That's sometimes I have to kind of calm down because these guys want to strangle me because I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> the time and let's go from there. Um, so it came out of that and then we just started building and then of course everybody kind of started putting their parts and their pieces again starting to make that gumbo song soup that we started doing and uh it you know it was our first song that chris produced uh with our drummer which he's an amazing producer in his own right and uh you know and so it was all of these culmination of things that were happening in the country at the time and like i said what continues to happen now and uh and it's something that you know uh it speaks to today uh you know the lyrics you know uh, give me liberty it, you know kind of came from the idea of that famous speech give me liberty or give me death i don't know why when i was singing the song in my head that line was the line that was in my head and i was like wow so i wrote that down started researching more and then that's kind of how the, the kind of the the lyrics developed from there right so that's 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 deep. It's pretty deep. Um, yeah, it's a lot going on in the world right now. Yeah. Maybe we need a yeah. single like that. <laughs> a lot going on. Um, so on that note, what do you guys see in the most immediate future for Disciples of Babylon? Like, is there going to be a full length um, LP or is it going to be another EP? Like, what can you tell us anything about? You know what's in your future plans well right now we are wrapping up a series of acoustic videos that we shot uh during the pandemic and i'm finally doing the last bit of <laughs> the, the putting together process actually eric needs to uh touch up a, a couple things but the the meat and potatoes are pretty much done uh, i'm just waiting for a uh, clearance uh from the other members of the band but i think for now because of the you know again things are opening up but certain things are closing down i had a couple right. of right. gigs canceled on me because I, I i'm a, a work for hire musician as well mm -hmm. and for now i think just trying our best to write more songs and maybe come up with a an album as soon as we can yeah, I, I think the idea is to continue what we did with Liberty, is to continue releasing singles. That seems to be like the ongoing trend now with everybody. Is that right, right. Yeah. Releasing singles, so we're, we're working on another song right now that actually Chris, uh, it was Chris's idea that we're getting ready to mm -hmm. wrap up very soon and release that. And I think what we're getting, that the idea is to continue releasing singles. I'm not quite sure in terms of the band if we're going to be there might there's a live streaming event that we're talking about putting together now mm -hmm. that may be the only gig that we kind of do this year i think we're going to wait until 2022 to really start aggressively performing and touring again because things are starting to close down again and there's a lot of talk with you know these mask mandates and everything and so we had a, another live gig that we were going to announce but it just kind of fell through and it was kind of a blessing in disguise because of everything that's going on here in la and just around the country so I think what we're going to continue to do is build singles 
put those out and then eventually it's going to lead us to the next release which should be probably a full length if not it'll be an ep but it'll probably be a, a full length next year but we kind of just want to make sure things are done with all this craziness you know i think a couple other bands like pearl jam they've decided they're not going to tour at all and they had a record that came out during all of this and they decided not to tour at all until this whole craziness ends so uh you know we want to try to do the responsible thing i know i mean i'm so desperate to play again but like yeah. at this point it's like i'd rather be safe than sorry and i would hate to be responsible for putting on an event or getting sick and, and mm -hmm. you know so i think it's you know we're gonna kind of just lay low keep putting out our singles we've got a ton of content like you mentioned with these acoustic videos that we're excited about putting out and uh you know and some other things that we're going to be doing so that's kind of like the good plan sounds like plan so yeah it's 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 uh, <laughs> i i wish everything was going in a much different direction but you know we have to work with what 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 we have going on right now and you know we have to yeah. be responsible for you know everything that's going on but you know you can only do so much so Sure. just hope that everything turns around for the better here in the near future and you know we can keep going on the trend of having these events things get better and you know we can see at least a little bit of normalcy i know things won't probably go back to like immediately the way things used to be but like you know a positive trend would be nice mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah <laughs> agreed um on that note so we're coming to the end of our official time together, AKA my line of questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for uh, being such good sports while we all work through um, those technical difficulties on um, the audio end. Um, I'm glad we could have our chat today. Uh, I like to end with a kind of weird off the cuff question. And since your band's mm -hmm. name is uh, Disciples of Babylon, I kind of wondered if you could travel back in time to any period of time. Ooh. Where would you go? What would you do? And why? Dang. Okay, I need to. I need a minute to think I, about I, this one. Well, he's thinking. <laughs> I, uh, I think uh, I'm trying to think. My God, I think it would probably be, you know, the beginning of like rock and roll. Like, you know. Great answer. <laughs> it's not like you know the rhythm and blues players you know uh now they're now some of the names are going to escape me now because i'm thinking but like you know that that time period of when rock and roll was beginning and being in that time and and just kind of seeing how the genre developed and you know just looking at the at, at the at the players and, and and how this came to be and 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 that to me would be really cool to go back to that time and just kind of relive that yeah I, I, I was kind of thinking the same thing uh but maybe even a little before uh the the father of rock and roll i'd go back and check out the blues cats yeah. uh in the beginning uh i i don't know if robert i would johnson. go as far as robert johnson uh, and his crossroad uh story but uh, definitely, I'd love to check out the time around when all the kings were around, BB, Freddie, Albert, uh, and just just see, check out that scene because yes. I think that was like just mind blowing. You know, uh, maybe even uh, check out soul, rhythm and blues. Uh, you know, check out Ray Charles when he was getting started. Like, that must have been insane. Just yeah. <laughs> hearing that guy play and sing was like, I can only imagine people's reactions because to this day, one of my favorite things to do when I get back home and I need to unwind is start to prep whatever it is that I'm going to cook to eat <laughs> and put on my, my Ray Charles uh, vinyl and nice. just crank it up. Love that. Um, yeah, I could definitely relate to that. I'd probably like plop myself back in like a room where Little Richard was first getting everybody to like shake and literally rock and roll because it was very frowned upon 
to gyrate and move yeah. in that manner. Yeah. yeah. He was like, whatever, let's have fun. Absolutely. Tracker, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all those guys, all of those Yeah, guys, Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry, yeah. Holland Wolf. All yes. Of yeah, all of the originators. We wouldn't, there would be no rock and roll. There would be no heavy metal. There yeah. would be none of yeah. this if it wasn't for them. So that's why I kind of yeah, yeah. put yeah. myself back in that time to see yeah. how that check out, out Check out the Chicago scene. Check out Memphis. Check yeah. out uh, even Nashville. A, a little bit of the, the country scene too. Back in the day, you know, yeah. check out Cash Live. Like that must have been. Johnny really cool. Cash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> that era, that whole era is just mind blowing what these artists were accomplishing, like way ahead of their times. All of them, just incredible musicians. I couldn't agree with you more. And um, on that note, I want to thank you guys for uh, your time today. We keep Thanks for having us. Low on time, which is good. It's a positive thing. I guess it's good. A lot to cover, <laughs> a lot to talk about. I really wanted to get you know you guys introduced to an international audience, so mission accomplished um with what time we do have left i wanted you to go ahead and take the floor please do plug your socials um leave everybody with what you want your lasting impression to be so the floor is yours yeah i i would say the best way to get in touch with us is disciplesofbabylon.com we do have a free giveaway that you can get our our debut ep uh for free if you go to disciples of babylon.net and i think it's slash free music or it's slash free either one of those two will work and you can sign up and get into our mailing list that way and you can find us on instagram at uh, disciples of babylon uh twitter at disciples of baby like a little baby and uh facebook would be babylon band official and uh, that's it. You can find us on Spotify and all that good stuff. We are everywhere. Yeah. All right. Sounds great. So I am, you. again, go ahead. And thank you. I, I, I wanted to say from both of us and from the, from the other yeah. guys, again, thanks. It's been a pleasure. For, your, for the support and, you know, and for supporting what you're doing for not only us, but for all emerging bands. I think it's really amazing. This network of people that we've grown to know over the years and our international mm -hmm. audience and everything. And so thank you for what yep. you Of course. I mean, That's like, you know, hey, like we gotta support each other. Okay. I mean, I kind of had a situation where, you know, it was hard for me to get that support. So like, I, my goal is to support a lot of people and musicians that people don't know about. And, you know, of course, <laughs> You know, de nada, nothing, it's nothing. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you again. And um, I am Rocktavia Rose with Rock News UK. Um, we have had the pleasure of chatting with Disciples of Babylon. Please, again, do check out all their socials, um, stream their music, give them a try. And uh, we'll see you later. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye, you. guys. Bye. 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 Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>